Germany's decision to procure eight MQ-9B Sea Guardian drones through NATO's support and procurement agency is not just another line item on a defense shopping list. It is a statement about how Berlin and NATO more broadly expects the next decade of maritime security to look, persistent, data-driven, and increasingly unmanned. The announcement made on January 12th sets the framework for eight aircraft and four certifiable ground control stations, with first deliveries expected in 2028. That timeline alone tells you something important. Germany is not buying a quick fix for a single crisis. It is investing in a capability it expects to live with, integrate and scale across a long strategic horizon. So why the Sea Guardian and why now? Start with geography. Germany sits at the junction of the North Sea and the Baltic approaches with critical sea lanes, ports and energy infrastructure nearby. In a world where maritime competition is no longer limited to surface ships and submarines but includes undersea cables, offshore platforms and grey zone behaviour that thrives in ambiguity, the key advantage is not firepower, it is awareness. The MQ-9B Sea Guardian is built to stay in the air for a long time, cover wide areas and feed commanders a continuous stream of surveillance. And in modern maritime operations, persistence is often more decisive than peak performance. The official reasons cited for the selection are revealing long range and endurance, all weather capability, and the ability to operate in unsegregated airspace. That last phrase may sound bureaucratic, but it is the hinge on which this whole acquisition swings. Europe's airspace is dense, regulated, and politically sensitive. A drone that can only fly in restricted corridors or only over water is a niche tool. A drone that can be certified to fly routinely over populated areas without geographic restrictions becomes a national instrument. The MQ-9B's UK military type certificate in 2025 is therefore not a footnote. It is a signal that this platform is crossing the boundary between expeditionary drone and normal aircraft. If Germany wants a system that can support homeland security tasks, maritime patrol and alliance missions without turning every flight into a special event, certification is not optional. It is the entire point. Then there are the technical choices that align with Germany's operating environment. Pole-to-pole -pole satellite control matters because NATO's northern flank and high-latitude areas can stress communications coverage. De-icing matters because Europe's winter weather is not a theoretical scenario, it is a recurring operational constraint. All weather sounds like marketing until you remember that the North Sea can deliver rough weather that grounds smaller systems and degrade sensors. When a platform is designed around reliable operations in these conditions, it changes how planners think. Instead of asking, can we fly today, they ask, how many orbits do we need? That is a fundamental shift from episodic surveillance to continuous presence. But the most interesting detail is the intended ecosystem, not the aircraft itself. General Atomics points explicitly to interoperability within NATO, particularly alongside Germany's P-8A maritime patrol aircraft. This is where the acquisition becomes strategically coherent. The P-8A is a high-end crude platform optimized for wide area maritime surveillance and anti-submarine warfare. But it is also expensive to operate and finite in number. If you use it like a constant watchtower, you burn readiness and budgets. If you use it as a response tool, tasked when something suspicious is detected, you need a persistent sensor layer to cue it. That is exactly the role a long-endurance unmanned system can play. Hold the empty space under continuous observation, flag anomalies, and then hand off to crude assets for identification, prosecution, or deterrence. Ask yourself the operational question NATO planners wrestle with daily. How do you cover vast maritime areas with limited hulls and limited airframes? You don't do it by buying one exquisite platform and hoping it can be everywhere. You do it by building a layered architecture. Unmanned systems provide endurance and breadth. Crude aircraft provide flexibility, complex mission execution, and the ability to escalate. Surface ships and submarines provide presence and, when necessary, force. The Sea Guardian is a sensor node that helps connect these layers into a single operational picture. And in an alliance context, that picture matters as much as any single national capability because maritime security is rarely a single nation problem. This is also why the procurement route matters. Germany is buying through the NATO Support and Procurement Agency under the MQ-9 Support Partnership Framework. That sounds like process, and it is. But process is capability. Multinational sustainment is where many European defense programs quietly fail. Platforms get acquired with fanfare and then struggle with availability, spares, upgrades, and training pipelines. NSPA's framework is designed to simplify common procurement and sustainment, which means Germany is not just buying drones, it is buying into a shared logistics and support architecture. In theory, that reduces costs, improves readiness, and creates a more standardized training and operational baseline across NATO users. In practice, it also makes coalition operations easier. When multiple countries operate the same family of systems, they can share tactics, mission data approaches, and sometimes even maintenance concepts. 
That commonality is not glamorous, but it is how alliances convert spending into usable power. The European proliferation of MQ-9B variants, Sky Guardian, Sea Guardian, and the UK's protector RG MK1 points to another reality. NATO is standardizing around systems that can integrate into civil airspace and routine operations. That is partly operational necessity and partly political necessity. European publics are far more sensitive to routine military flights over populated areas, and national regulators are far stricter. A drone program that cannot overcome those constraints becomes trapped in a narrow set of missions. The MQ-9B's certification narrative is therefore a strategic enabler. It is what allows the drone to move from deployed asset to domestic instrument supporting maritime surveillance and homeland security tasks in a predictable, scalable way. Of course, there is a hard question hiding behind the optimism, why 2028? Four years is a long time in defense planning and even longer in a security environment that changes quickly. The answer is that Germany is buying not just aircraft, but a certified integrated sustainment back program. That takes time. But it also means Germany must bridge the gap in the interim with existing assets and allied cooperation. The real test will be whether Berlin uses the runway to prepare, building operator pipelines, integrating data links and command and control, rehearsing joint maritime workflows with the P8A, and aligning rules and procedures for unmanned flight operations. If it waits for the first delivery to start thinking about concepts of operations, the program will arrive on schedule but late in capability terms. And then there is the question of mission growth. The Sea Guardian is primarily about maritime surveillance with an option to add anti-submarine warfare capability. Options are attractive because they keep doors open, but options also force strategic choices. Do you keep the unmanned platform focused on persistent sensing and queuing, or do you push it into more specialized roles that may require additional certifications, training, and integration? If Germany does pursue an ASW expansion, the operational logic would likely be to extend the reach of maritime patrol networks, again not replacing the P8A, but enhancing the sensor web that supports it. Yet even without that step, the Sea Guardian can alter the balance of effort by freeing high-end crude assets from routine wide area search. Zoom out and the acquisition reads like part of a broader NATO adaptation, shifting from platform-centric thinking to network-centric endurance. In the past, maritime surveillance relied heavily on a limited number of crude aircraft and ships rotating through patrol areas. Today, the Alliance is building a layered approach where unmanned systems hold the line of persistent awareness. That is not about chasing headlines. It is about making sure that when something happens at sea, an ambiguous vessel track, a suspicious pattern near critical infrastructure, a sudden shift in maritime traffic, NATO sees it early, interprets it quickly, and responds with the right tool at the right level of escalation. So the most important takeaway is not that Germany is buying eight drones. It is that Germany is buying time. Time in the air, time for decision makers, time to coordinate with allies, and time to shape the battle space before a crisis forces rush choices. In modern defense, that kind of time is often the rarest commodity of all. The Sea Guardian is, at its core, a machine designed to manufacture it. And if NATO has learned anything in recent years, it is that the side that sees first, shares fastest, and acts coherently is the side that controls the tempo. The question is not whether Germany needs this capability. The question is whether Germany and its allies will integrate it well enough that by 2028 it feels less like a new system and more like a natural extension of how NATO already fights, watches, and deters.